My name's Nate. I work here at Google on the Android WebView team, and I'm here to talk to all of you today about you know, what is Android WebView and why do we care. Uh, so uh, this is Chrome University, but uh, we're at a talk called Android WebView, and how is this Android WebView thing connected to Chrome? Well, Android WebView is a project in the Chromium repository, and the idea behind this project is we want to bring the best parts of Chromium to the Android platform so that all Android developers all around the world can take advantage of the really cool stuff we have here in Chromium. I'm talking about Blink, V8, multi-process browsing architecture, you know, all this really great stuff. And you may be wondering, well, how does this actually affect me? Well, like I said, we're a project in Chromium, which means that your work here in Chromium, depending on you know, the, the code you're writing and where you're writing this code, might actually be impacting all of these Android apps all over the world. So if you've ever tried to ship a feature in Chrome or you've tried to ship a new feature in the web platform, you're asked, does this get supported on all of our supported OSs, all of our platforms? And the very last one on the list is Android WebView. Okay, so what actually is this Android WebView thing that we're all apparently contributing to? So Android WebView is an Android view. And an Android view is really just a fancy word for a rectangle. It's a visual rectangle that shows up in Android apps. It's a rectangle that the user sees. There's all kinds of views. There are text views for showing text, image views for showing images, and a web view is a view for showing the web, the web contents. And beyond just being a rectangle, we come with hundreds and hundreds of APIs spread across dozens of different Java classes that Android developers can call to configure this web view, to interact with it, to kind of poke the web contents in whatever way they need to. So uh, what does this actually look like in reality? So you can kind of think of WebView in four very broad use cases. Uh, and some of these might surprise you. So over here on the left, we've got a picture of Gmail. And here we are, we call this the embedded use case. So Gmail is primarily an Android app, you know, implemented in Android views. But those emails are arbitrary HTML. So it makes a lot of sense to use a web rendering component to actually render that HTML. The second case is maybe the most obvious. Uh, you know, Android comes with this web view component. It knows everything about the web, navigation, JavaScript, rendering, all of it. So it makes a lot of sense to try to build a web browser with a component like this. It does most of the heavy lifting, and you just wire up a URL bar, some buttons, and some things like that. Uh, this third case, um, maybe some of you are familiar with it. There is an app framework called Cordova. I believe it was previously called PhoneGap. And the idea here is we have all these developers out there in the world who know the web platform. They know how to build a website, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, all that good stuff. But they want to launch a mobile app. So Cordova is more or less one giant web view. Your entire app lives in this web view. You get to write code in your favorite language. And this web view you know, runs everything. All your business logic is in Java. And everything you see there, as beautiful it is, as it is, is all HTML. There's not a single native Android view in there, except for the web view holding everything. And a fourth case that is very important is advertisements. There's a huge network of web-based internet ads. And it makes a lot of sense to you know, not reinvent the wheel. We have all these web ads out there. Let's just reuse them in mobile ad frameworks. And we use a web view to show that content. But you may be surprised at all the times you've encountered web view. Sometimes it really fits in seamlessly with the rest of the Android offering. So. Uh, here are a few different scenarios you may have hit on your Android phone, and you may be wondering, well, which of these are web views and which aren't? So uh, if you've ever set up an Android phone, you've probably gone through the setup wizard. You've added your account to the phone. That's what we see here on the left, and it looks like a simple text input. And, you know, there's a next button. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, there's this Gmail Compose. Obviously, this is a huge text field where you're writing the content of your email. Uh, Nothing too surprising there. If you're reading an email, it might have a link. You click on the link, you navigate to that page. 
uh, this is pretty obviously web content. You know, we went out over the internet, we fetched that URL. Um, in a very similar use case, uh, user experience, we've got the Facebook app, you're scrolling down the news feed, click on a link that your friend posted, and you know, you're seeing that URL. So which of these are actually web views? Uh, it turns out most of them are. Uh, that very simple Google sign in, that's actually just navigating to a website. You know, it's just navigating to a mobile site and you're using the web right there. This Gmail Compose, it feels like a text input. It's actually a web view. You're actually editing a DOM tree when you're writing your email. That makes sense. We're making HTML in the end. This third thing is actually not a web view. Even though it feels like it might be, you know, we're in the Gmail app, we're looking at a web page. This is actually a Chrome tab. This is something called Chrome Custom Tabs. And this is an offering that we work on elsewhere in Chrome. And that's running in a totally separate process. It has a back button to go back to the rest of Gmail. It feels very much like you're in the app, but it is actually Chrome. The fourth thing, even though it's the same exact user experience, is actually not a Chrome custom tab. Facebook decided that they like this concept of this you know, in-app browser, but they want to implement some of that UI themselves, and they're using a web view to actually do the heavy lifting for the web content. So web view is used everywhere in basically every app you've ever used in ways you may not have noticed for a huge variety of use cases that you may not, as developers, actually be expecting. And there's two points here that I really want to highlight. There's a huge opportunity for impact. You know, being, like I said, this is a Chromium project, and I'll get to that in a moment, but we all have the opportunity to contribute to this, so there's a huge opportunity for your features to have a positive impact on the ecosystem. But with this comes a lot of responsibility. We need to think about all these different use cases and make sure that this feature makes sense for all these use cases, because they are quite varied. And then just to give you a very brief look, why are people drawn to this web view thing? What's so enticing about it? Uh, these are some of the differences, perhaps, with something like Chrome Custom Tabs. We have some APIs to interact with this web contents. And you know, the APIs you might expect are there. You know, there's an API to load a URL, and this is analogous to typing a URL in the URL bar and clicking go. You navigate to this page, kind of not surprising. There are callbacks about the page navigation lifecycle, saying the page started loading, the page finished loading. You might use these in a browser app to tell the user, okay, it's done, you know, ready to use this web page. And sometimes loading goes wrong, so we have some error callbacks. These could be network errors, HTTP errors, security errors, you, know, you name it, we've got callbacks for it. Uh, but this is all kind of basic. WebView provides a lot more control for app developers, more control than you might initially expect. So we have APIs to inject JavaScript and execute arbitrary JavaScript code to interact with the DOM tree in the web contents. We have APIs to give direct access to the cookie jar. You can look you know, exactly at what cookies are there. You can modify cookies, uh, clear all the cookies, whatever you want. Uh, we have full control over the net stack, which should intercept requests. This is a way for the application to modify a request, cancel a request, uh, totally fake a request to a fake page, or you know, substitute the response with whatever they want. Uh, so the app has quite a bit of power when it comes to Android WebView. Now this might seem a little bit scary for us in Chrome land. You know, it, you know, we don't want apps fiddling around with web contents. But you have to remember the app is the browser in this case. You know, just like your browser has access to your cookies, well, the app has access to your cookies. And to understand why this isn't you know, a huge problem, I think we can dive a little bit deeper into what I call the technical guts. So. Uh, I think it's important to understand what is the trust model here for Android WebView. The very first thing we have to mention is that the browser process is the app process. When an app wants to load an Android WebView, it starts calling these APIs. All of our code gets loaded into the app process. We share the same address space. There is no process boundary between us and the app. So we trust the app entirely. Um, and this aligns very much with our goal. We want to bring the best of Chromium to the Android platform. We don't want to be you know, enforcing what the app can or can't do. You know, we just want to expose the best parts of the web platform and help the app take advantage of these. 
But this is okay because each app is roughly equivalent to a different install of Chrome. So uh, if you have the Gmail app and the Facebook app, they're each gonna have their own cookie jar, they're each gonna have their own HTTP cache, and everything's pretty isolated. And within an app, you can think of each web view as a tab. So each web view is allowed to have access to the same cookie jar in this app, just like all your tabs would you know, share this state. Now, uh, one of the things you have to understand about Android WebView is we are an Android view. And with this comes certain privileges and certain responsibilities. So uh, one of the drawbacks of being Android view is that we have to integrate very closely with the view system. And one of the issues here is that the view system is this huge hierarchy, this huge tree structure of different Android views, and they all get called, uh, their on draw method all gets called at the same moment and everybody has to render synchronously into the view tree. And WebView is no exception. And sometimes this means we have very slow graphics operations that are blocking, uh, but uh, this is unfortunately one of the consequences of being an Android view. One of the other issues is that when Android rolls out new features, we want WebView to blend seamlessly with the rest of the Android platform. We don't want you to notice if you're looking at a WebView versus a text view unless the developer wants you to notice. So when Android launches smart text selection or text magnifier or autofill, WebView has to support it in exactly the same way. Uh, and this is to give the user a very consistent experience app to app. And one of the perks though of being an Android View is that we get to write APIs. And these APIs are available to every Android application. And this is our opportunity to expose the best of the web platform. And the example here is we have an API to control and configure the service worker that's shared between all the apps web views. But Android web view is of course more than just an Android view, it's also a Chromium thing. So what exactly do we mean? Uh, some of you may be familiar with this diagram on the right, uh, except for the little markup I have at the top. This is the Chrome layer cake. And Chrome is all the way at the top. We have content right beneath it, and there's a bunch of other lower layers this content is out of date. I didn't try to fix the lower layers, but the top of it is so accurate. We have a content layer and a Chrome layer. Well, Android WebView is not Chrome. Android WebView is a separate project, but we are a content embedder, which means you can swap out the Chrome layer and replace it with the Android WebView layer. And we are a top level directory in Chromium Android underscore WebView. Uh, so we're a content embedder, and this means that if you're working on any of these lower layers, the net stack, uh, if you're working on the web platform, V8, all of your contributions are instantly inherited by Android WebView. And this is really great because as we're evolving the web platform, it's really nice that WebView is able to take advantage of this and give this to Android developers. Uh, but the, again, this is a double-edged sword. One of the issues is that if you're designing a huge architectural change or you're changing some core service, you have to ask yourself, does this service make sense for Android applications? Does this architectural change benefit Android web views all over the world, all over the Android ecosystem? So uh, like I said, we're a content embedder, and one of the really great things in the content layer is Chrome's famous uh, multi-process architecture. We do multi-process browsing, where we've got a browser process, all these renderer processes. It looks more or less like what we see here. We've got some utility processes for services, network service, GPU service, there's a whole bunch of others. This is perhaps a too simplified version. Uh, and this is what Chrome looks like. And WebView has sort of a similar architecture, but before we get to that, I think I should talk about a slight caveat. Chrome sometimes looks a little different. On low memory Android devices, all these extra processes come with some memory overhead. And we don't wanna be spending too much of the user's memory. so. What we do is we run some of these services in process. And the advantage here is we avoid the memory overhead, uh, but it comes with the trade-off of stability, security, we can't do sandboxing on these processes. Uh, but this is the trade-off we decided was right for Chrome for Android. But we still have more or less the same thing with the renderers. So WebView's architecture is actually quite similar to Chrome's low memory architecture. Uh, we still have the browser process, as I mentioned before, this is shared with the app. This is the app process. Uh, we run the network service and GPU service in process among many other services. 
one of the main differences here is that we have a single renderer process. This is different from Chrome, where we have the opportunity to isolate all these different sites from each other. Uh, WebView doesn't have that opportunity right now. We're looking at expanding this to multiple renderer processes, but with each renderer process comes more memory overhead. And given that there's so many WebView apps out there, it doesn't quite make sense to apply the same policy for WebView as we do for Chrome. Uh, it would just take up too much memory. One of the other points that I will mention here is that uh, right in the title, I say Android O+. So what I mean here is that recent versions of the Android operating system, Oreo, Pi, uh, and you know, hopefully all the future versions use this architecture. Uh, for technical reasons, on the earlier versions of Android, Lollipop, Marshmallow, and Nougat, we have to have a different architecture. And it looks like this. Uh, maybe I should have led with this diagram because it's so much simpler. Uh, it's all in one process. Uh, so we call this an in-process renderer. It runs in the browser process. And the obvious issue here is we're not sandboxing web content in the renderer from the browser process. This is even an even bigger issue because if this renderer gets compromised, it's not just the browser, but it's really the entire app that can be compromised. So this is kind of why our team worked very hard to launch the out-of-process renderer for Android Oreo. All right, so now that we kind of understand a little bit about what WebView is, what it looks like to users, you know, the technical guts, uh, hopefully everyone wants to launch features for the web platform and architectural features for WebView too. So what does that actually look like? Uh, so the developer workflow is actually pretty similar to Chrome for Android. We worked pretty hard to make it very consistent. You know, you're compiling an APK, you're installing it, uh, anyone who's worked on Chrome for Android is probably familiar with this. But if you're not, we have documentation for how to work on this. Uh, you just need to grab an Android emulator on your computer or an Android device uh, here at Google. But one of the issues with WebView is that the WebView APK only implements these APIs. And that in itself is not so interesting. You want to start calling the APIs. So you do need an app to actually use WebView. And there, like I said, there's a bunch of Android apps out there on the Google Play Store. But if you need an Android app, you can use the WebView shell, which is a very thin wrapper around WebView. It implements a browser type app. Now, if you are designing your features for WebView, there are some fun challenges. Uh, unlike Chrome, where the viewport is basically the full, or the web contents is the full size of the viewport, Android WebView could be any size. It could be quite small, it could be quite large. And this was a fun challenge we got when working on safe browsing, and bringing this to WebView. We wanted to make interstitials meaningful and have a very good user experience, even when WebView is quite small. So this was our solution, uh, and we just detect the size of the WebView. Uh, but there are also some very weird restrictions that you might not be expecting. Uh, WebView runs in the app. So if the app hasn't requested internet permission, well, WebView doesn't get that internet permission. So we have to operate under the assumption that internet might not be available. Sometimes there are network configurations that WebView has to respect uh, that you might not be expecting in Chrome land. Uh, another interesting restriction is that we can't create our own UI. We can't create our own pop-ups. So if you're implementing JavaScript alerts or dialog boxes, WebView has to request that the app creates this, because the app gets the final say on whatever UI shows up to our users. Now, if you've designed a feature for WebView, you may be wondering how does it go out to our users. The release process is exactly the same as Chrome for Android. Uh, we release the same exact version on the same day to the same exact users. Uh, sometimes it's even in the same APK, but I won't get into that now. Uh, Chrome, and Android, uh, Chrome for Android and Android WebView are both pre-installed on Google devices. We pre-install the same exact version. Uh, one of the issues here is that if you're implementing a feature, it's not enough to make sure it works right on Chrome. You have to make sure it works right on WebView too. And if there was a bug in WebView and you have to re-spin for this bug, well, you have to re-spin for Chrome as well. We're pushing a new Chrome update to all our users. And of course, same release schedule means we have the same channels. We have Canary if you want to verify quick fixes. 
We have dev if you need to uh, check for crashes, beta if you want to you know, look at metrics data, and of course stable when we launch to the bulk of the population. And on the subject of metrics, WebView also supports the same metrics infrastructure we use for most of the other Chromium projects. Uh, if you want to log metrics, use the same histogram logging functions and macros. Uh, if you want to look it up in the dashboard, it's platform equals Android WebView. If you want to roll your feature out with Finch, uh, also called variations or field trials, then again, it's just platform equals Android WebView. And if you're working in one of these lower layers, content layer, base, something like this, we know about all the feature flags defined there. So you don't, you know, you can use the exact same feature flag you've already used and just add platform equals Android WebView to the list in your Finch config. So it's really, really consistent. So I'd like to uh, thank you all for your time and hopefully when you're designing your features in these lower layers or if you're even adding Chrome only features, you think about bringing them to Android WebView. <laughs>